Hello, everybody, and welcome to Money Matters. If you'd like to make money, learn about crypto and other investment topics, please subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the content, then hit that like button as well. Let's get started. As a disclaimer, this is not financial advice, nor am I a financial advisor. Well, even though we are in an uptick today with some green on the chart, and it looks like Bitcoin has made a bit of a rebound yesterday, and Ethereum is over 2000, which is great, we're still not out of the woods yet. What we're going to do today is we're going to explore a couple of indicators, more than a couple of indicators, that will show us we are in for another letdown before we start to turn back around. And uh, I did quite a bit of research on this, and um, I have a, quite a few charts that will show us some of the indicators. And you let me know what you think in the comments, but I think that we're, we're uh, poised for yet one more downturn disappointment and then perhaps going up from there. Uh, we've been meandering about the low to mid 30s for Bitcoin. Uh, we've broken above that now. Uh, whether we close today or, or not is beyond me. But uh, let's take a look at the pricing uh, as it's going to be affected in the future based on some charts and research that, um, that I've done over the weekend. It was, uh, it was very telling, to be honest with you. So what we want to do is we want to see if we and find out whether or not Bitcoin is definitely going to drop. There's a bunch of different factors. Uh, what we're getting a look at is the one-year bonds, inflation, interest rates by the Fed, 30-year bonds, exchange net flows, and the stock-to-flow model, which is always a good start to take a look at. So the first thing we want to look at is one-year bonds. So the government has been printing money left and right due to the COVID-19 outbreak. And we're trying to or are trying to keep the economy on track or into quote recovery mode. But in that process, they've they've created so much excess cash that banks have no place to put it. So what they ended up doing is they ended up offering uh, good yields to the banks on the short term one year bonds, uh, which obviously the banks love because they're going to be making money off of that money that's just sitting around. <laughs> and uh, as you can see here. The, um, there was a huge spike in the, in the um, bond prices here. So this is great. However, remember there's always cause and effect. So there's other factors at play here. And remember, we don't just have one year bonds, we have other bonds as well. So in light of this activity, there's other things at play as well. So you've probably heard through the news that we're heading into, you know, a period of high inflation. Uh, let me tell you something. We've already been in a period of relatively high inflation. It will be going higher. But the government try, or the Fed, I should say, tries to mitigate the impact of inflation in a myriad of different ways. So, of course, interest rates are one of their main tools but we're getting close to zero on interest rates so or we probably are at zero um, in some cases but they're inevitably going to have to adjust interest rates up when they do that it's going to affect the economy and inflation so this is a negative impact and it has a negative impact on long-term market feasibility one of the biggest indicators of, of long-term economic health is the 30-year bond market and you can see here that right now the bonds are drop 30 year bonds are dropping rather drastically uh, due to some of the activity that the fed has either done which with respect to the short term one year financing or yield rates for banks and their rumblings of interest rates going up to to combat inflation so it's affected the 30 year rate much lower or the 30, 30 year bond much lower than um obviously the short-term bond. That's important to us because there's a correlation to be made on down the road that we want to look at with respect to 30-year bonds and how crypto fits into this whole scenario. So if you look at this chart, you can see it is very, very telling. This charts uh, the 30-year bond and the price of Bitcoin. And if you notice, they're tracking really, really close. And typically they're within just an astonishing uh, close proximity. And crypto's running about several days, maybe three to four days behind the 30 year bond. So you can get a pretty good indicator from bond prices, what the future holds for Bitcoin. 
Well, we've already discussed that the 30-year bond has gone down due to inflationary activity by the Fed that raising interest rates and the short-term yield that they're providing for banks. So it's definitely having a negative impact on 30-year bonds. It's also going to have a negative impact on Bitcoin if this chart holds true, which historically it has. There's a couple of other indicators that we want to look at that kind of bolster this type of an argument. I went through and I was looking at um, Bitcoin uh, exchange net flows, and you can see here they have gone up dramatically. Well, what that means is that there's a lot of people, usually big investors, that are putting Bitcoin on the exchanges. They don't just put it there for decoration. They put it there because they're going to do something with it. If they're putting it there, it means they already have it. If they already have it, they're not going to be buying it. So end result would be they're putting it on those exchanges to sell. So as you can see here, this was a huge spike in net flows for Bitcoin. That would tell us that there's a lot of investment Bitcoin sitting on exchanges just ready, waiting for the right price to sell. Well, I don't think it's an accident that we're in the mid 30s and we probably will go to the higher 30s before we see this massive jump in Bitcoin that's been brought onto exchanges dumped onto the market. Once that happens, the price is going to crash severely, uh, which matches the charts that we've looked at before. So the indicator here is that big money is pulling Bitcoin out of storage, putting it on exchanges and getting ready to sell it. The good news is, is that when they do that, it'll provide liquidity or there'll be an opportunity for free cash, which can go into altcoins, which could help bolster their prices in the uh, upcoming market as well. Let's take a look at stock to flow. This is this is a Bible for a lot of people on what Bitcoin pricing is going to be doing in the future. Well, here's where we are right now. And you can look back through time at any time we're at a yellow downturn and see that we're not popping straight up. We're still going down. So my guess is, is that we'll we'll track a little bit lower and then we'll recover and come back up. So I believe that we do have one more price dip to go. And it'll probably be 30, right below 30, maybe even get into the 20s. If there's a lot of uh, buying uh, pressure there, we'll, we'll just wick down and come back up. But I think 30 is where we're going to settle down, maybe the high 20s. Then we'll start a trend upward afterwards. But we should see this stock to flow model turn up before we get a good indication that we're going to basically skyrocket into the future. So if you think about it now, we have activity by the Fed, which is extremely important for the overall economy. They have to do what they're doing either psychologically for the market or they have to do it for practical purposes. Don't discount the stock market because the stock market tends to be going higher and higher now too, which is good and it's based on the activity that the Fed is, is uh, implementing at this particular time. However, it can't go up forever. And it will go down. When it goes down, it's going to have an impact as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a dip in the stock market sometime midweek uh, going into the holiday weekend. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Remember, August is a very dead month for stocks and equities. So it could go on to a downturn and last all the way through August. I'm not really sure, but we should see some activity to the downside on that as well. So all indicators are pointing that Bitcoin price should be dropping again. Uh, we've kind of laid out what the path is going to be and we're we should be set if you still have dry powder on the sidelines wait for that dip and get in again because i think it'll be your last opportunity before we go back up when we do go back up in price i don't think it's going to be anything fast it's going to be a sideways punching bag all the way up to forty thousand to forty one thousand once we get there I think that sediment within the market is going to change dramatically and people are going into a FOMO mode saying, hey, 60,000 is going to be on the docket again and they're going to start to buy. So uh, we should at that point in time and how long it takes is we don't know. It's going to be a long time. It's going to be months before it gets into the mid 70s. But I think that we should go into the mid 70s before the end of the year and probably cap out somewhere between 74 and 78 before we see a retracement down. And uh, at that time, altcoins will will take off as well. So all good things. I think it's just spread out much longer than it has been in the past 
due to a lot of extenuating circumstances that are affecting the crypto market. What I think is that we're going to be hitting one more downturn and then kind of have a lazy uh, July going into August, but we should start to see uh, the battleship turn around and head towards higher pricing once we get through this uh, next final dip. Let's see if we're right on this one, or let's see if I'm right on this one, and uh, we'll just keep a close eye on it as well. Last but not least, remember, winners never quit, and quitters never win. Always give your very best effort to overcome the challenges that you face in life. I hope you have a great day. I'm planning on having a fantastic day, and I'll see you tomorrow.